Hello everyone, I am Mithul Golakya from Infium Labs, Infium Technologies and in this video we are going to see how you can install one of our product InfiV cards on cPanel server. InfiV card is a multi-user business card builder with SAS. So if you haven't purchased it, you can purchase from here or you can even go on our website infium.com and you can click on buy on Anvato. So in this video, we are going to install vCards on subdomain like we already have running our main website infium.com on root domain. So in this video, we are going to install it on a subdomain called vCards dash says dash demo dot .com. so I already have it working over here as a sample if you don't know how to install a Laravel application or any PHP application on subdomain with cPanel we have a dedicated video for that so you can watch this video which is already available on our channel and you can do that so if you are also planning to install a v card on a subdomain then i will say you first look into this video and just you know uh, make your subdomain ready so as i said we al i already set it up and it is already working so we will just go ahead with the installation process so let's get started if you have already purchased the product then you should get a docs folder or you can follow the steps on our website you can go to our websites then you can go to from our work from products where you will find various products but you need to choose vcard so i will hit no more and i will be redirected to in vcards page and then i will go to the documentation so this is kind of introduction but the first thing that i would like to verify is you know you should have this technologies need with your server so you will need php 7.4 mysql 5.7 so let's check first of all on our server uh, if i go to my multi php manager on my cpanel uh, i can see that we already have 7.3 7.4 8.0 8.1 8 so i can set it whatever i want then if i again go back to my php my admin let me see which MySQL version I'm using if you see server version over here. I am already running 5.7 This is most critical part because if you are using older version Then maybe some Laravel features or some in card features will not work or even if you may get an installation process problem uh, There are some resolutions to that that we can suggest but it is Better and highly recommend that you use these versions So yeah, now we already have that map so let's get started with the installation so whenever you purchase the product you should get the file from the code can you that you should keep with yourself you can read more about system requirements over here that there are some specific laravel requirements that you can read like bcmyth php extension this all extension should be also installed so make sure you have all these extensions installed then if you want to upload a higher uh, size of files then you may need to update these things into your php.ini file and uh, yeah this is one also main thing that you need to install vcards on a root domain or a subdomain not with the you know folders so i cannot go to my public.html and there i create a folder called in vcard and that's where i install it just remember you need to install the vcard on either main domain or a subdomain even on local, I will highly recommend that you create a virtual host with the subdomain. So in our case, we already have that. So let's get started. So first of all, what I will do, I will just delete this file. So now our uh, directory is totally empty. And then we will just go over these steps. So now I will hit next. And the first thing that we need to do is if you have purchased vcard, you should be able to find this.zip within the main zip. So I already have extracted this main zip that I got from code can you and that's where I got this dot zip. So what I will do, I will just go and upload it to my main folder. So I will go here. I will hit upload. Uh, let's select a file. Go over here, this dot zip. So it may take some few seconds to upload it. 
and uh, also I will say you extract this this dot zip file into one of the folder because we may need one file of the database from this folder so uh, also extract this this dot zip on your local as well so as our upload is done let's go back and let's go back to the documentation um, yeah upload this dot zip to your web server and extract it there okay I will go and extract it over there okay vcard says demo.infium.com okay let's give it a couple of seconds okay we are done uh, let's remove this make folder okay now if you have seen this video a lot of time what happens or what problems happens which I already highlighted into this particular video is two things one it will not automatically work with uh, sorry it will automatically work with HTML but if in the second case if you want to run it with PHP you need to set the version of the PHP of your subdomain which your web server should use so we will quickly do that I will go to the multi PHP manager I will find my Vika domain over here and then I will say PHP 7.4 and apply before I hit apply let's see what changes it will make if you see we already have htaccess file over here and this is the file you see I after if module nothing is there now if I go back multi PHP manager and I'll just say hit apply I will close this file I will again go back and view this file you see this add a module has been added so this is what cPanel updates when you set a PHP version. That means whenever any .php file or .php7 or any that file is called, we need to use module of PHP7 of Apache or web server, whatever web server we are using. So this is one most important thing that you should keep in mind and you should update it. Now let's go back and go to the second step. In second step, we need to set a database. So I will again go to my cPanel and I will hit the MySQL databases menu. Uh, let's create one database vcards demo. So I will do a create database. So now my this database has been created. Let's copy the name of the database to somewhere. I will open my text editor and I will copy over there. So my database name is copied and as per the best practices let's create the user with the same name of the database password you can generate any strong random password that has been used over here so i will just use this one i will copy that to over here just for my reference because this will not be visible after i create a user now the user also has been created this is my username so this is my username ideally it is same to my database name now the final thing that we need to do is add user to the database so we will need to add vcards demo user to the vcards demo database and i will give all privileges and i will hit make changes now i will go back and if i verify that now vcards demo is current user uh, this is current database and it has privilege user vcards demo so we are done so this is how database has been created now as a next thing what we need to do is we need to set up environment file so we will find out this file over here I will click edit and then what we need to update as per the documentation is this parameters so app name let's go and first edit our app name which is say like uh, infi v cards demo if you see i have a space between the name so i have surrounded it with the double quotes so at any point of time if you are adding any value into your dot env file which has a space in the value then you need to surround that with the double quotes and also whenever any special character is there in the value you need to also surround that with the double quotes. so any password or any value that has any special character like dollar explanatory 
that kind of thing that is recommended that you do that now for this particular time till the time we get the installation done i will keep it local and i will make this debug app debug value to true also the second thing that we need to update is app url so in our case our app url is vcards demo dot infium.com so i will copy that i will add over add over here i will also enable https so if you have your url with https then you can do that otherwise you can use http and um, the next thing that we need to update is database so db host i will try to keep just as local host uh, in some cases 127.0.0.1 doesn't work so maybe you can update local host or you can keep 127.0.0.1 as well 3306 is my default port if your port is different then you can do that the quick way to check is click on the let's let me go back to my page for my admin oh, sorry uh php my admin okay so in few seconds yeah we are redirected and we have a database over here and uh, local host let me find if we can see port anywhere over here but the default port should be you know 3306 only uh so that is good okay let's move to our next variable which is database so we already have copied database so I will paste over here username I will paste the same and password I will surround in the double quotes so this is our password that we have created then I will hit save so now we are done with the database setup this is done for mail driver you will also need to set up a mail configuration we have a detailed video for that as well uh, which you can find from our channel like how to set up email credentials into Laravel application but we'll quickly do that in this video as well so let me go to my email accounts uh, let me hit create uh, I will say vcards demo sorry yeah generate a quick password okay let's copy that as well to somewhere uh, vcards demo oops at the red infium.com okay hit create and let's find it now we got demo I will hit check email I will say configure mail client so it should give me these all values so I will quickly update those as well so SMTP will be by default then because we are going to use SMTP we are going to use recommended SSL settings and we have username over here as well so let me go to back what will be our mail host okay mail host will be outgoing you need to choose outgoing server so i will choose mail.infium.com let me update this one port will be 465 as we are going to use ssl over here then the next thing is username i will go back and copy my username which is ideally our email and I will put that into from address as well because that is what the address that we are going to use I will try to keep this from name as app name but you can change it whatever you want just for this time we will keep it then let's copy a password as well so remove null and surrounded by double quotes uh, let's update it to SSL and hit save so that is what we have to do with the email setup if you want to see a detailed video on that as I said you can see that this video so email setup is done this is optional step that you can do if you want to store your assets on s3 also if you want to get payments working with the stripe or PayPal or razor pay then you need to follow this step for this particular video we will skip it uh, but otherwise uh, you can do that we'll also plan to create a detailed video on this particular thing a separate video on that so I think we should be done now let's try if our 
server is working okay let me remove this index part and hit okay so we got the error demo front testimonial doesn't exist good so why I try to keep the uh, oh sorry yeah 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 one step we forgot sorry is this particular step where we didn't imported our default database on our database if you go to the database it is totally empty and this is the reason I enable these two variables app env is equal to local and app debug is equal to true so at any point in time if you have any error then rather than you know just plain message that something went wrong you can see what is the exact message right so let's do that I will go to the import and I will hit choose file and we will select the file from database in PV cards so let's select that file and let's hit import let's give it a couple of seconds and then try again once import is done okay so we are done uh, if you are getting any error over here then I think first that should be resolved if as I said if you are not on the uh, correct MySQL version or something like that and the port one is you can see here is the port that we are using now let's try to refresh it again okay it seems working now let's do a final step where we want to do a login for the admin so I will copy this uh, let's to get started admin one two three four five six and do a login and yeah I am able to see the dashboard user panel vcons now the final steps before you are done that I would like to highlight is first of all as you see we are using the default login and password so it is highly recommended that you change this password and emails and the second thing we have kept this app debug true that you should make false and this local should be changed to production this is very critical step because whenever app debug is true anyone can see your errors and your path which expose a lot of things so you should always make your app env production whenever your server is live if you are using for data development purposes for staging purposes that is fine and app debug should be false so I will just hit save and now if I refresh this little debug bar should be gone let me do a refresh and yep it is done now just for the verification if I change a password a little bit in DB say like 123 and hit save now if I do refresh you remember we got that error detail error message but now we should not get that detail error message you should just simply say 500 that means at any point of time if any of your user is experiences any problem he will not be able to see any details because the detail was exposing a lot of things like your usernames passwords credentials that kind of thing but now it is secure so I will go back to my in I will just remove this one two three hit save come back to refresh it is working so yeah this is all about like how you can install the NPV cards on your cPanel server but still if you are facing any problems and installation of or if you feel that anything that is not covered and it should be covered you can always contact us on support or you can also comment below in the video yeah thank you very much